Hello, thank you for joining us today for the library's online class of The Art of Writing a Letter. And we also want to thank you for your wonderful support for uh, our public library system as well. My name is Kimberly and I am a local journalist and freelance writer. And today we are going to be covering four different topics. So we are going to be discussing the history of letter writing. We're also going to be going through some examples of famous letters that made a difference. We're also going to be talking about different types of letters and messages. And I'll be offering some, some tips about how to uh, make those engaging. And at the end, the last thing we're going to talk about is a quick, simple formula uh, to write a letter and to reach out to someone. So, so this, is, this is at the end of the video, the last few minutes, so if you, if you want to scoot to the end for that, that, that's good too. So letters are so powerful, and, and we, we all feel that. We've all received a card or a letter that has meant a lot to us, or we have sent one that has also meant a lot. It reminds me of, uh, of letters from my, from my great-grandmother whom I never met, but I remember sitting in my grandmother's living room with my mother and reading these, these letters from her and seeing her handwriting and uh, touching the pages that she touched a hundred years ago and <clears throat> laughing, laughing with her about her jokes or seeing the world from her perspective. And it has really offered a way to, to know her and, and get to to meet her. Uh, and I'm also recording this too from my grandmother's uh, letter writing desk as well. So I'm going to start out with a quote from Lord Byron. And he wrote that letter writing is the only device for combining solitude with good company. And <laughs> That is important now, too, as we all know a lot of us are alone and staying safe and writing a letter or a message is a great way to, to reach out and connect during this time and all times. So we're going to talk a little history first off. And it is believed that the first handwritten letter was from a Persian queen. Her name was Atosa. And this was about 2,500 years ago, in 500 BC. Letters were often delivered by hand, and they usually had a wax seal on the back. Uh, we've all seen those Jane Austen movies or, or Game of Thrones fans, and, and know that wax seal. And payment was often delivered upon receipt, so the person receiving the letter off, often gave the payment. It wasn't until 1840 that Great Britain began the system of a prepaid stamp for delivery, and the first stamp had the portrait of the young Queen Victoria on it as well. The United States followed suit with the system with prepaid stamps in 1842 or so. So both newspapers and letters were important ways of sharing news and understanding what was happening in our lives and in the world. In fact, journalists were called and are still sometimes called correspondents for that reason today. And letter writing was also called correspondence. So letters were a vital source of sharing knowledge and connecting through times of war, times of peace, and right now, times of pandemic. Before all of that, though, uh, there were many ancient cultures that were creating their own systems of writing and this was often through pictures or images. For example, of course, there's the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Uh, the Chinese culture also introduced characters uh, and images from elements of nature. And then in the second millennium BC, so about 4,000 years or so, give or take, there was a Semitic speaking people who took a, um, a selection of Egyptian hieroglyphics and added sounds to the symbols, thus creating a t kind of a type of, of written language. And so all the symbols stood for the specific sounds and, and 
Phoenicians. So the Phoenician mariners kind of spread this out on their travels. And by the 8th century BC, the alphabet spread to Greece, where it was there adapted and refined. And of course, something else that's important are uh, the tools of writing letters. So we all remember from school learning about papyrus along the banks of the Nile in Egypt. There were plants that the Egyptians gathered and made into papyrus about 3000 BC. And records were also kept on clay tablets uh, and bark and stone. Uh, another tool which is very important for the letter writer is the pen. Pens were originally made from wood or metal or bone, later quills, and they, they all had a point for the ink. And ink was originally developed in China from plants and animals and minerals. Pencils originated in ancient Greece. Um, the Greeks would use a piece of lead to temporarily mark something and then later became common as uh, a writing tool in the 15th century or so. And as we all know, technology changes quickly. The printing press was developed in 1440 by Johannes Gutenberg in Germany. And then the telegraph was invented in the 1830s and 1840s by Samuel Morris of Morris Code, of course. So that was the first instance where our letters and messages and words were transported via waves. And then of course we have computers and, and phone waves and here we are in 2020 with the most common form of letter writing being through emails, texts, and social media posts. So all forms of these writings are important in that they connect us and help us to express ourselves through the power of words and the choice and selections of words that we use to, to help shape and change our world. <clears throat> so we're going to look at a few examples of uh, some famous letters. I've got a love letter here from Henry VIII. And this letter is to Anne Bolin. It was written in 1527 when King Henry was still married to his first wife. So we know the power of love letters to, to create change in institutions or uh, in people's lives or in cultures too. And Henry VIII here, he signs it, written with the hand of him who wishes he were yours. Power of a love letter. And then we also have an example of a letter here. This one is written by Charles Darwin, and he was a big letter writer. He, he sent a lot of letters. Uh, one of his main correspondents was to his friend, Joseph Dalton Hooker, who was a botanist. He wrote about 1,400 letters to him. And in this letter, Darwin is thinking about, uh, of course, ideas uh, for evolution and his research. And he writes to his friend, I have read heaps of agricultural and horticultural books and have never ceased collecting facts. At least, at last, gleams of light have come, and I am almost convinced, quite contrary to opinion I started with, that species are not... It is like confessing a murder, immutable. So that is an example of, of sharing information and fleshing out ideas with a, a trusted friend or colleague through, through letters. And of course, letters are important in politics too. This is uh, a letter with, from Winston Churchill. So he became prime minister in 1940, and there was pressure on him to make a deal with Nazi Germany to end the war. So his private secretary wrote a letter to him saying, saying this, uh, that you should, should end the war um, by making a deal with Germany. And Churchill wrote back, I am ashamed of you for writing such a letter. I return it to you to burn and forget. So again, very powerful message is sent through here. 
So well, there's a variety of different types of, of letters and messages and notes. There are love letters, which we saw. There are letters of gratitude, and this could be a thank you note. This could also be something I love to do is writing to, to somebody I know and just making a list of, of things that you're grateful for for that person. Uh, other different types of letters are messages of sympathy, perhaps notes of invitation, letters to the editor, and just the simple basic letter of providing updates of what's happening in our lives to stay connected. So here are a couple things to keep in mind for some of these different types of letters. If you're writing to make your voice heard, such as a letter to an editor or to a committee making a decision or possibly a political representative, uh, Mary Piper in her book Writing to Change the World offers some key components for a successful letter in this regard. Uh, she mentions that it is important to share an understanding of both sides of the issue. It's also extremely important to write in a respectful tone and be clear and use straightforward language. She writes that the most compelling letters were handwritten and heartfelt. That's also, some of the best writing advice I've ever received in my life was from my mother, and she said, write from the heart. Uh, Mary Pfeiffer also mentions um, that <clears throat> it's, it's a good idea to, to share gratitude or an, or an understanding for the person you're writing to and for the work that they're doing, uh, you know, an understanding that things can be hard. And at the end, you can always offer an invitation uh, or a call to action or a, a possibility of, of, of a hope for, or something we can do for the future. And these types of letters are uh, also important during this time as, as we reflect, think about how we would like to move forward and how we would like to share our voice and our ideas regarding that too. One of the most common types of letters and messages we have these days uh, is through social media. So social media, just like through letter writing, is about building and maintaining relationships. And it's just on a different platform really. So some social media sites such as Twitter uh, also have character limits or word limits. So again, it's important to choose your words wisely uh, and, and know the, the meaning behind them too. So with social media, there's a few things here to keep in mind. It's important to be honest, uh, be transparent, and be respectful as well. You know, you are sharing this with the world, and it's, it's such a, a wonderful medium and, and that we can do that, but it's important to, to keep all those healthy parts of maintaining a relationship and growing and building a relationship uh, in that form, too. And then, of course, you bring your own voice, uh, bring your own personality forward. And uh, think about the people that you love to follow on social media. What is it that you love about their posts? Is it the photographs or maybe they're funny or um, inspirational quotes? And think about what you love about it. And you can uh, pass that forward through your own messaging. So I've got a couple um, fun quotes here. And these are uh, examples of using your voice. And these are some first quote or first tweets on Twitter. <clears throat> so this one is Ellen DeGeneres uh, in 2009, and she writes, "Tis my first twit or or tweet, twit or tweet, twit or tweet. Everybody, <laughs> is that anything? <laughs> is this anything? So that, that's an example of using your voice. 
And then another one we have here of a first tweet is from the CIA. And they write, we can neither confirm nor deny that this is our first tweet. So those are some fun examples of how you can um, bring your voice into messaging and letter writing. And these messages are really just a faster uh, way of communication than writing a letter. Emails and text messaging are really the most common ways we communicate through, through the written word these days. Uh, and it, it is fast and it is so nice to be able to have that immediate connection. But there are a couple things to keep in mind too with emails and text messaging. I know when I type, sometimes I type more quickly than my brain is processing, where if I'm handwriting, it's a little bit slower, so um, they sync up a little faster, they align um, a little bit more clearly. And so with text messages and emails, uh, it's best to always go back, read over them, uh, to make sure that you're saying what you want to say. And with the keyboard, we have the gift of the delete button, so we can go back and, and be sure that that our intentions are true with the words that we're using and um, that we're sending into the world. Another type of letter, which are kind of fun, are anonymous letters or letters to strangers. I have heard of children and families writing letters of gratitude or drawing pictures or sending uh, messages out into the world of good thoughts and and love and hiding them in different places for people to discover on their walks or when they're shopping in the store and really just uh, help to, to make people stay better. Then of also, of course, during this time, I'm sure you have seen or seen pictures of the beautiful messages in chalk that children and families are drawing of, of rainbows and sharing good messages of, of love and understanding right now. A couple more tips for writing letters. Uh, sometimes it is fun to make a card. Uh, you can see what you have in your house. Uh, you can make a card out of construction paper. You could cut up some old magazines uh, and glue and make a collage to send to somebody. Or you could just take a piece of paper fold it in half and, and draw a picture on the front, or maybe write one of your favorite quotes or a poem on the front, or find a photograph um, and make a card out of a photograph. If you're writing a letter or an email to reach out or update a friend, I find it's also fun to uh, include pictures as well once in a while, uh, especially in email, it's so easy. Digitally. I have a relative who I correspond with over email and we both like to quilt and so we'll send emails to each other about the quilts, include pictures, and then once in a while include pictures of family as well of, of the tea party with the kids and, and um, seeing, seeing each other's faces in that way. So the photographs are also a nice addition to connect. Uh, also traditionally in letters, People would clip out articles uh, from newspapers that they think that the recipient might be interested in. We have lots of these in family letters, and my, my mother um, has, has done this uh, throughout my life and continues to of different, you know, different newspaper articles that you might be interested in. And so it's always kind of a nice, uh, thoughtful gesture of, of that. Right. So we have come to the last few minutes of this class, and I would like to offer you a short formula to write a letter. And this came from a friend and colleague of mine, Karina, and I, I just love it. I, I have found it very useful. So first off, if you're writing a letter to somebody, uh, write something that you appreciate about them or something that you love about them. 
Then second, write something that is happening in your life. Share something that is happening with you and in your life. And then the third thing is to write something that you would like to do with that person in the future or a memory or something that makes you think of them. So connecting both of you together. So first off, write something that you appreciate about them. Write something about happening in your life and then write something about uh, what you would like to do with them in the future or a memory and again um, a way that you, you have connected or would like to connect. So receiving that letter in the mail can mean so much whether it's 1920 or 2020 or 2120 and I would like to say thank you again for, for being here and for sharing your words and messages with others during this time and always and wishing you a happy letter writing.